Call it what you will, but even one of the most famous movie cars of all time had its origin story and transformations over the years, and has become a muscle and movie car favourite of many who pay large sums to want to have their own version of the cinematic icon. Originally pursuing an American Ford Mustang for the part of the police car his main protagonist would drive in his first feature-length film, director George Miller was wisely convinced to opt instead for a locally built Australian car in order to have better ease of parts needed for the onset mechanics and was able to obtain a second-hand Ford Falcon for the part. Picked up at an auction in Victoria, along with the other cars for the film, with a budget of $20,000 to be spent on just the vehicles alone, Miller and production partner Byron Kennedy were able to obtain a 1973 Polar White Ford Falcon XB Coupe as their base car of choice. Opting for the GT Falcon model in its two-tone white base and black stripe color, the car itself was already a sight to behold before any modifications were to take place. Being one of only 218 XB GTs produced in this color scheme, and with the then highest V8 option Ford Cleveland 351 4V head Q-code engine package included, the car came with a 4-speed manual gearbox and a top loader and 9-inch diff. It carried a black and white interior with black leather seats and dash, a front spoiler along with two Ford and GT badges showcasing its category and class option. Listed by Ford on the books as having 300 horsepower, though Ford Australia was known for undervaluing their performance numbers to avoid insurance hikes, the XB GT was the highest option performance package for the Ford Falcons in that era of the 70s muscle cars of Australia. Under the advice of producer Byron Kennedy, who was a bit of a motorhead himself, modifications were suggested and added to give the car more of a personality and sense of danger on screen. A blower that was to be protruding from the bonnet of the XB was one of the suggestions made by director George Miller to add a more monstrous appeal to the Pursuit Special, seeing part of the engine reveal itself while chasing down Nomad bikies. A wine supercharger which was originally attached to a local drag race of the time was borrowed, along with its Scott injector hat, adding further to its sleek appeal. Initially wanted to place a monster style front end on the XB to give it a more distinct look to differentiate it from the other police vehicles used in the film. It was later decided to use an original design style, first seen at the Melbourne Motor Show, as displayed on an XC panel van that was designed and built by Peter Caterpain. Though it has always been suspected that the original headlights of the XB were replaced with the then new at the time XC GXL rectangular variants, which led to some to confuse the base model of the Pursuit Special to be a 1976 XC Fairmont. Adding additional roof and rear spoilers, and removing all Ford and GT badges, the wheel arches were also given a modification and added flare extensions. The car was next given a new coat of paint to add to its dark mystique in the form of a two-tone colour scheme with a gloss onyx black base and satin black detailing adding stripes to the bonnet and sides of the car which curved along onto the rear panel towards the rear spoiler. The 8-spoke 15-inch Sunraiser wheels which were also seen on the other police vehicles were coated black as well along with the coating and removal of all chrome and aluminium lining of the XB. A set of 8 Zoomy side pipes were also included combined into two pairs of four placed between the door and the rear wheels on either side. With the exterior all but complete, there was at the time little change that took place within the interior of the Falcon. The main one being the replacing of the Ford GT steering wheel with a Max Rob Sass deep dish style 4 inch wheel and adding a fictitious button onto the gear lever, being a 2 speed rear end switch of a truck and is still available to obtain with ease, unlike a number of the other parts listed. To give it more of an identity to connect it as a police vehicle, a mount was added toward the passenger side that was to hold a dashboard blue police light, possibly made by the then Peterson Manufacturing Company of USA. And finally the inclusion of a fictitious custom police radio console attached to the center front roof of the interior. The final addition to the exterior to showcase its affiliation with the main force patrol was a singular rear license plate with the MFP initials placed on it and a pair of front side panel magnets, golden bronze symbols replicating the uniform's badge sprouting the words maintained right on its decal. With only one car available for the entire film, the producers took full advantage of the XB's durability but were careful enough to not let it become a wreck on the side of the road. By the end of production, no longer needing the GT Falcon, and not fully knowing how well the film would do financially, Byron Kennedy offered the now titled Black on Black as payment towards mechanic Murray Smith as there was not enough budget left to fully pay off the crew who worked on the film. In order to make it street legal, the Wyand blower was returned to the drag racing team that originally supplied it, and the Zoomy pipes were removed, and the car was returned to its base estate. Part of trying to get it to keep its Mad Max appeal was with the addition of the newly modified 1969 Corvette L88 style bonnet scoop to cover up the gap where the blower once settled in, which also led to the change of colour scheme on the hood, adding a more matte grey onto it. Failing to sell a Pursuit Special in order to make some money from a gas guzzler he had little use for, Smith was called up from the Mad Max production once more, only after a year or so later, in order to reobtain the car to use in the follow-up, Mad Max 2. Continuing on the story of Mad Max in its 1981 follow-up, 
The producers chose to shoot the film in the central outback New South Wales town of Broken Hill, which would lead to a number of changes to the look of the production and the vehicles used. Opting to bring back the original car from the first film, this time wanting several changes made in its appearance, since a number of the parts used originally were either removed or given back from where they were initially obtained from. Needing to repaint over the old black on black had meant most of the detailing was no longer as visible, as the matte grey on the bonnet was painted over and the side stripes had been all but faded out, with only slight hint showing through a much dirtier, muddied up and slightly dinged shell on the original XB. Having returned the Wyand supercharger back to its owner after the first film, the production was able to obtain a pair of GM 6-71 unit superchargers, hollowed out again and driven by a pulley system once more, and now with the longer intake neck, this time giving the appearance of a more elevated blower shown off over the bonnet. Side pipes were added back to replace the original zoomies, with more straight line cut pipes in place that were given additional length compared to the originals and were no longer chrome over black. The maintained right decals and MFP plate were left off, along with changes to the boot which was modified by removing the lid and rear window to accommodate the addition of two side-by-side -side makeshift fuel tanks which were closed off with old British style bus caps. Presented in a muddy and worn state, the XB was given a more parts-gathered nomadic appearance, with the 8-spoke wheels still present in the front and wider 18-spoke wheels being added onto the rear, along with an additional spare tyre rested within the available space of the exposed rear window. Finishing off the exterior, with the XB's custom front end altered, with the lower portion removed for more outback terrain clearing, the fiberglass nose was soon destroyed less than 5 minutes into the first opening chase, giving it a grittier appearance, with the inner grille and custom light and front end mounting now exposed. Inside changes also followed with this new Nomad theme, with the blower switch now placed in a reverse position for better ease of use in high speed situations. The gear knob of the stock XB had changed to a wooden base one, and most of the interior, save for the driver's seat and dashboard, was gutted and removed. The inclusion of an extra fuel gauge was added for emergency usage, and as such, the gauge obtained was originally manufactured by Dubro's gauges, with the word leaders and the red sticker added on later to fit the part, along with the red flashing light warning to alert Max when he was running out of fuel. For added protection, which showed to come in handy later on, a roll cage was placed within the XB, along with an added machete, holstered by the driver's side door, and knives added within and under the car, and a custom seat bolted onto the passenger door to accommodate Max's new partner, an Aussie bred blue heeler cattle dog named Dog. Given the need to see this continued edition of the black on black to be seen colliding and blown up, a second Ford Falcon XB coupe was brought in to double the original, this time in the form of a 1974 yellow and black Fairmont XB GS automatic, which although was not at the top of the line as the GT, was a slightly upgraded edition of the standard Falcon 500 version of the XB. Carrying a less powerful version of the 351 Cleveland, the XB GS double was used more extensively in the driving and chase sequences of the film, and is virtually identical to the original, with one major telltale being obvious in the form of the missing windshield wipers that gave away its presence on film when the original was not used. With the second XB rolled and destroyed, the Pursuit Special was no longer needed within the story, and with production over, the original black on black was sent to a local Broken Hill scrapyard, where it was eventually spared demolition and would go on its own separate adventure over time. Sent away to be scrapped, the original and sole surviving XB from the first two films was to go from being abandoned to being restored in a slightly altered form of its former glory, in a combination of style of its look from Mad Max and Mad Max 2, where the front end was restored and indicator lights added onto the bumper, and the twin fuel tanks retained, and the car now given a gloss black one-tone coat of paint, with its interior left untouched. Not making an appearance in the third installment, it would not be for another 34 years till the black on black would make another official return to the Mad Max franchise. With the original now in private hands, Several Ford Coupes were purchased by the production for use in various scenes within 2015's Fury Road. Not told within the film, this was not to be the original Pursuit Special our hero Max Rokotansky drove off in from the MFP headquarters. Given a more detailed explanation in various media affiliated with Fury Road, this was a recreation of Max's former prized possession in order to keep the connection to the original film and actor Mel Gibson's Mad Max, now played by Tom Hardy. Trying to stay faithful to the first and second film, the black and black was seen more outdated and less suited for this new world director George Miller created. Carrying more rust and out of wear than before, this coupe only had one additional fuel tank in the boot and was lacking in the rear spoiler wings usually seen attached to it. In addition, the side pipes were given a more curvier look to them and all four wheels were now once again 8-spoke 15-inch sun raziers again, with its tyres shown to be held together by wire as its sides are missing and old rags keeping its inner tubing in place. Retaining its Arcata paint style front end, now with the more welded sharp edge bumper look and metal front plating, its headlight plastic covers no longer have any lines to accentuate them and are cracked and missing pieces. The interior is somewhat reminiscent of Max's scavenger version of the black on black, now with the fabric covered driver's seat and is no longer leather. Unlike the GT original which had a 4 speed manual, this XB carries a stock C4 Ford automatic transmission with a T-handle shifter, shown to have its supercharger button placed on its base mounting. 
With the blower once again being hollowed out and sitting on top of the air filter, it was linked this time directly to the car's motor and not a makeshift one of its own to turn the belt and pulley, giving it a more natural feel of motion. Unlike the supercharger of the second film, this Pursuit Special had a Scott hat sitting on top once more, like it did in the first. With two cars originally built for production, since the XB Coupe had become a much sought after collectible since the release of the first film, with its price and value growing each year, no GTs were obtained for Fury Road, and two 302 V8 Fairmonts were used in its stead for driving, while a third six-cylinder coupe was brought in for the car's destruction once more on screen. Shifting the story as the black XB is seen destroyed in the first few minutes of the film, the new Interceptor is modified into a bare metal, back raised with larger rear wheels and with off-road tire treads added front and back demonic looking version of itself. With dual mounted blowers one on top of the other, along with added rear release spikes and spike barrels, a set of barbed wire headlight guards, and is now known as the Razor Collar. Being a radical redesign of the black on black by concept artist Peter Pound, this new Interceptor was to be built on two different Falcon hardtops. The first of which was originally a 1976 based XC Falcon which had belonged to Cameron Manuel as his own personal drag racer which he used to promote his automotive sandblasting company Resto Preps which gave further inspiration to presenting the Razor Cola in its bare metal look. Carrying an XB GT motor, the XC was slightly altered and given XB front panels and its rear horizontal side indicators refitted and welded to match the XB vertical design. The second coupe was also supplied by Resto Prep and was based on an actual XB Fairmont with a 302 V8. Mounted with 6V53 and 6V71 superchargers, the collar maintained its Scott hat along with an additional modified human skull mounting on top of it. Slightly raised at the front, the rear was highly lifted and fitted with the Ford F109 inch differential and the interior was gutted with the original XB dash removed, leaving little to no trace of a Ford Falcon internal look. While the original exterior fiberglass mounted spoiler and flares were replaced with metal to complete this new transformation, Originally the Razor Colas were first presented with a half black paint scheme on its rear to keep an extra bit of connection to the original Pursuit Special look, yet this concept was later abandoned when the production moved from Broken Hill to Namibia. Short lived in the film, this new incarnation of Mad Max's prized homage to his original MFP V8 found its fate between the wheels of two big rigs in a fiery explosive end, with the XC Cola used for filming completely destroyed and later crushed, with the number 2 XB remaining intact and used to promote the film at various events. Shown to be making one more appearance in the next upcoming Mad Max installment, Furiosa, the Black on Black has had a number of changes throughout its 40 plus year run, and many have their own preferred version of it. Yet who would have guessed, when a stock standard Polar White 1973 Ford Falcon XB GT was to roll off the Ford Australian assembly line, that it would become one of the most iconic movie cars to ever be shown on our screens. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like, subscribe and bell icon and feel free to check out our merchandise and follow us on Instagram via the links in the description below to help this channel grow in order to bring you more content such as this one as your support is what keeps this channel going.